Hey gang, good to see you. You got your uh, East Bay Weekly. Hopefully you flipped it over and we're ready to get going. I just wanted to say um, a huge thank you to those who were involved in TC Cares yesterday and our single moms ministry. Uh, we are still getting stats back from all of that, but um, <clears throat> I know for our TC Cares, they served over 300 people yesterday in that ministry, which is fantastic. And that we had over 20 individuals from our church that were um, a part of that ministry and um, that there was tremendous connectivity of the individuals that were there. And we're going to be getting more uh, data and stats on our single moms ministry and want to be able to um, connect back with you. So we are thrilled with the way that we were able to connect <clears throat> In our, um, in our community yesterday. So thank you, folks. Thank you so much, everyone that partnered in these special ministries. You know, um, love is why. It's why we do what we do. But it all started with Jesus. It's why he did what he did. I, I was reading a, a, a meme here just the other day and this is interesting about the heart of Jesus. It says, he cried. Jesus cried. He knew Lazarus was dead before he got the news. But he still cried. He knew Lazarus would be alive again in moments, but he still cried. He knew death is here but not forever, and he knew eternity and the kingdom better than anyone else could, but he still wept. And he wept because he hurts for us. He wept because this world is full of pain and regret and loss and depression and devastation. He wept because knowing the end of the story doesn't mean you can't cry for those who hurt. And Jesus showed love is why. Love is why he came. Love is why he cares. Love is why he did what he did. And he shares with us exactly the motivation that we need to have. And we've been working through this for the last number of weeks. And I just want to work through and navigate through our outline here and go through a quick review of what we had. We started with love is why Jesus came. Love is why Jesus came. Now remember who he came to. Remember who he came to. He came to sinners and he came to undeserving people. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now think about this. You ever see God bless the wrong person? Huh? You ever been up on that? Whoa, God, what are you doing blessing that person? You ever see God bless someone that, like, he didn't consult you on? God, you just bless that person and you know what they did? You ever see God do that? Well, here's the news. You and I are that person. Amen? Yeah, God's blessed us way beyond what we deserve. Love is why he came. God came to undeserving people. God came to people who actually have done things directly against him. In huge proportion and he not only came he died for those people he did what we could never do for ourselves and in fact the only thing we contribute to our salvation is the reason why we need it in the first place he came love is why he came I, we went through a few more of these, and I'm just going to navigate through these quick. Love is why we live in community. God created us for community. 
and there's two communities he created us for community with him and here's the other one we don't mind that community like yeah community with god that sounds great he also created us for community with each other doesn't that sound exciting okay next point <laughs> but here's the big here's the big deal about that this is what jesus said in his what we call the high priestly prayer he says jesus says in john 17 my prayer is not for them alone but he's praying to the father father i pray for those who will believe in me through their message so he says I'm not just praying for my disciples right now, those 12 guys. He says, I'm praying for those who will believe through their message. Now, guess who that is? That's us. That all of them may be one. That's this community. It says that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us. And here's the clincher. That the world may believe that you have sent me. So there is a direct correlation with our community and the world seeing that Jesus Christ is who he is. Think about that. Our community, our unity is a message to the world that God sent Jesus. Conversely, our fragmentation is a damaging message to the world about Jesus Christ. Love is why we live in community. Love is why we do what we do. There's this motivation from 1 Corinthians 13. You know, if we speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm just a resounding gog or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, can fathom all mysteries and knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. And there's this equation I came up with. It's what the text talks about. Everything minus love equals nothing. We can have the greatest gifts and abilities and talents and knowledge. We can know all the theology. We can debate it all and know everything. But if we do not have love, the scriptures say we're a big fat goose egg. We're a zero. We do not have what God desires us to have. Jesus says elsewhere, by this all men will know you're my disciples. Get ready to fill in the blank. By this all men will know you're my disciples. If you have love, blah, 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 blah. Exactly. By this all men will know you're my disciples if you have love for one another. Love for one another. Love is why we do what we do love is why every part matters love is why every part matters the pinnacle celebration of heaven is the wedding celebration of jesus and we the body of christ are a part of that celebration love is why we invest we talked about this last week love is why we invest god gave out differing amounts of investment to three different servants of his and he wanted them to grow this investment and the two that grew the investment he said well done good and faithful servant and the one that was scared and hid it and just gave it back here you go I didn't lose it I just didn't grow it but I didn't blow it Jesus said you know what you did blow it you blew the opportunity I gave you out of here. Give me that, and I'm going to give it to people who are going to grow it. God wants us to grow his investments, not to blow the opportunity. Love is why we invest.
we're going to have a moment for some text message questions. I should have said this at the beginning. Love is why you forgive me when I don't do things the way that I should. That'll be next week's lesson. Um, there's a text message number. If you have any questions about vision, about things we talked about last week, whoosh, that's the number they go to right there. 231-492-5673. It's going to be at the bottom of your screen um, up here as well all along. So if you have any questions on those, you may text them in. And um, so go ahead. If you have those, feel free to do that. But love is why we invest. I want to um, introduce to you um, a friend of mine, Scott Ardeline. Scott, come on up here, my friend. Um, Scott was a part of our investment crew to Russia. Woo. Yes. Welcome to Scott. Scott was a part of our Russia crew with Ken Bowman and Daryl Leitz. And we are thrilled for their um, investment over there in Russia. Great ambassadors for Jesus Christ and also for our church. Let me tell you, there are people in Russia who think well of East Bay Calvary Church. Isn't that right, Ken? It's very true. They think well of this church. And they don't even know all of us. But they think well of us because of, of the faces and the hearts that have gone over there. So we're grateful for that. Um, Scott, you went over there, and um, we just wanted to kind of halfway give a, um, a perspective of the ministry there, but also talk about investment, and it's not really going to be our investment. I wanted to hear about the Russian believer's investment, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Just some questions for us really quickly. Um, what was your team's objective in going over? What did, quickly, what did you guys want to accomplish when you were there? Well, I think, I think on paper... Is that, is that thing on? Yeah. Um, I think on paper, it's to construct a building. It was an orphan crisis center. Um, and, uh, but it never ends up being that. Mm -hmm. um, it ends up being the people, the people, all of the people. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's amazing. I mean, if you've never gone on a missions trip, um, it's kind of hard to explain, mm -hmm. but like, Last night, I was so excited, I got a text from, or I got a, um, it's called a WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. um, got a WhatsApp from Sasha, our cook. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's, he's up. So I called him, not realizing that it was three in the morning, their time. Oh no! He comes running out of his bedroom, and he's got uh, cotton balls stuffed in his ears. And, but the biggest smile, it's like, and he did not care that it was three in the morning. He was bored, he was up, and he needed someone to talk to. We each, he knows 10 words English, I know 10 words in Russian. Um, and it's just, it's a connection, it's love, it's Christ love. It brings, it brings you true spiritual joy to get to know these people. And the building is secondhand. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask, um, just give us um, a quick perspective you know, in like 30 seconds, what's the church like? Um, the church is just, it's filled with people who love God. I mean, it's the people, it's... Um, How many people are there? Um, I think one Sunday we had about 35, and the second Sunday was Harvest Sunday, I think we had about 50. Okay. Um, but they've lost a lot of people. They prayed for a bunch of women to be saved, and, or, or to be married. And God married them all off, and they all came to the United States. So, <laughs> what are the pastors like? Um, Pastor Peter is phenomenal. Um, I truly, uh, he he looks. He's what I perceive Jesus to be. Um, I I know he wouldn't say that, um, but he just he loves shepherding his people. He was the bishop of 29 churches in the Old Blast, which is their state. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just a phenomenal man. And they're just, all they're doing right now is trying to train more pastors. Yeah. That's, that's their love. Yeah. Um, what is their prayer like? 
That's a big one. I can't yeah. do that one in 30 seconds. Okay, 40 Sorry. seconds. 40 seconds. Um, it's, when we pray, it seems like sometimes we just go through the motions. We pray for dinner. We pray for a friend. We pray for, they believe that God is in the room listening to them pray. And they believe it's going to be answered. They, they, they don't believe it's going to be answered. They know it's going to be answered. They know it's going to be answered on God's time. And they are so persecuted, but they know Christ is there. It's just um, send me someplace else. I want to go again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when we talked about this um, how, how do they share Christ in their neighborhood? Uh, they don't. They don't. They can't. Um, they can't. They can't put their name on their church. They can't go out and say, um, really, they can't go out and say, God bless you. They can't say, they can't share the gospel. They, the only way that they can... Um, evangelize is friendship evangelism and they can't share the gospel even doing that they have to tell their story um, or they could go to prison they can be fine you know um, everybody everybody in the church over there has some relative that has disappeared for sharing the gospel I, how many of us can say that you know, um, Sasha, who I was talking with last night, his grandfather got 15 years in prison, died in prison for sharing the gospel wow. on, on the street. Um, his other grandfather got 15 years for handing out Bibles, died in prison. Um, and they still, they still try to do it. So understanding that, <clears throat> they know that we have freedom of religion, that we can, we can share. Yes. I mean, we're, we're unhindered in any way. So what do they think of us? And what would they, I know I'm just kind of like no, giving you I, I actually, whatever. But. I actually called three of my friends over there, okay. and I asked them that question. So I was like, I want to be prepared here. Um, they said, why not? Why don't we? You know? Um, I do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know? Ask for strength. Connect with people. Brian, week after week, Pastor Brian is just telling us, build relationships with people, with your neighbors. These people over there can't. They have a judge that lives right next door. Good relationship because they don't talk to each other. You know? And I know sometimes we feel that way. But it's, it's, how hard is it to run into somebody at Bigby Coffee, at Walmart, at anywhere where you can build a relationship with somebody? You know? I, I, I want to challenge everybody here, including myself, that can we bring one person in a month's time to church, build a relationship? Can you imagine? We'd be full. Yeah. We'd be full. I mean, that's what it's about. Over there, that's what it's about. They don't know how to do it. I'm like, Facebook me. I want you guys to Facebook me. The ones who put Christian quotes on there, that's, that's a way that I can connect with them. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that we can connect with them that they can evangelize without going to jail. Yeah. It's a sad thing, but, and they, and they would rather be more per persecuted. They said the, the um, believers would come and question things more when they were more persecuted. It's hard to imagine, but. So here they are, persecuted, Trying everything they can do to get the gospel out. Trying everything there. Yeah. Everything that they can do. Yeah. 
And then here we are, unpersecuted. Kind of made me feel like failure. Yeah. Yeah. You know? There's a, a, do I have time for a quick little, a prayer story? Yeah. Um, no, but pa- yeah. Okay, Pastor Peter, um, Bishop, he started the church, uh, the Bible church where we stay at. Um, I believe about eight years ago, they got the concept that they wanted to take their church, which was meeting in homes, and have their own building. They started praying on it. They knew God would tell them what to do, and he did. And he said, put this church right in the middle of the subdivision that's out in the middle of nowhere. And I mean, it's like 10 miles east of Veronish. And there's probably two or three houses in the subdivision. And there's nothing else around. Nothing. Peter's like, God, why would you have me do this? You know, and, and I could see when he was telling the story, he's like, why would you have me put a church out in the middle of nowhere? So fast forward four years, they started construction after their church was completed and no one's around on a complex outside the city that looks over the church. They're they're basically mini skyscrapers, but they overlook the church, and they're housing 50,000 people that look down on the church. I mean, we don't always know why God tells us to do something, but if we do it... Yeah, God knows. God knows. God knows. Hey, let, let's, take, let's take a moment. Let's pray for our Russian believers and uh, family over there. And, um, and I'm sure they pray for us. They were up this morning. Yeah, that's cool. God, your blessing on the family of God that we are partnering with over in Veronish. We pray for Pastor Peter. We pray um, for these that we've had some impact. We pray for this orphanage and for the children that are in there, God, and your care for them. I pray that they will feel loved. And God, I pray um, that you will grow your church, you will build your church, that the gates of hell will not prevail. Hold it back. May May you take your church and bust through that gate and take it by storm and grow your church. And not only there, but God, grow your church here. May your kingdom continue to prevail. May the glory of your son continue to grow. And God, we pray all of this in his name, the glorious name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Bless you, brother. Thanks, man. Our last thought, and then we're going to take your text message questions. Love is why we focus on others. The Christian life and our vision for East Bay Calvary is ultimately an outward focus. Um, Philippians 2 and I'm just going to navigate through this quickly. Philippians 2 is the discussion about Jesus. It's an intensely beautiful theological treatise that the Apostle Paul gives. And, and, and it's so rich, it's so thick with transforming truths about what Jesus did for us. And it, and, it, and it mentions, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus. And it goes through what he did. It says he was in the very nature God, but he didn't consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, but he made himself nothing. And he took on the nature of a servant and he was made in human likeness and he was found in appearance as a man and he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And so here Jesus went through all of this 
And the whole application point of it, it says, in your relationships with one another, have this mindset. In the verses leading up to it, it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility value others. Value others above yourselves. Don't look to your own interests, but look to the interests of others. It's others. And love is why we focus on others. And it shouldn't be a huge, deep, dark secret of the Christian life. I mean, the Great Commission is really a focus on reaching others, making disciples, followers of Jesus, of others. The greatest commandments is to love God and love our neighbor or love others. I mean, everything for the Christian appears to be outward, and it's, and it's really no big surprise, because guess what Jesus did? His whole focus was others. And even when Jesus came, he said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. And to give my life as a ransom for many. And, and so, you know, Jesus had these tremendous statements. He said, you know, follow me. Follow me and I will make you, what does it say? Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I mean, others. I'm going to make you look for others. And then he said, you know, by this all will know you're my disciples if you have love for one another. And there's all of this perspective for others. And so really, if I take the whole thought that we've been trying to develop and put them into one main thought, here's what it is. It's others. Every one of us for others. When we look at, at the vision statement from last week, we talk about developing a culture where the best thing that we do is we leave church. Because during the week, we touch thousands of, of others. Thousands of others. Instead of just thinking, you know what, I, I touch people at church, and we do, and that's significant, but we touch thousands of people during the week. And to be outward focused, who's your other? I'm going to tell you a little secret about us. The last couple months, and I'm going to, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but the last couple of months, my family has been blessed to have some friends that we have built in our neighborhood here as a part of our church. And it's so cool to think that people that we got to know during the week actually come here and see us on Sunday. Like, this could be the day that they could actually get a break from us. You know, like, hey, we know that we know they go to church. Like, this is our day off from the Conovers. But they come here, and they worship with us. And I'll tell you how this has changed my perspective. Because I come here, and I don't, think about I hope I like whatever I hope I like the songs today Pastor Jonathan better picked out some good ones or I'm going to be ticked I don't think about if the pew is comfy or not comfy I probably walk past a lot of things that I could be ticked off with. And I'll tell you, I wake up Sunday morning and I think about those people. And I'm praying, God, I pray that today touches them. 
in a huge way. And it's changed me to think about others. And I really think that mentality is the mentality that, that Jesus had in perfection. He had it to perfection. And if we can even have it, and I have it such an, in an imperfect way, and if we can capture it in some way that will revolutionize our ministry and take a ministry and make it a movement. During the week, and then we do that out there, and then we take it and say, you know what, let's make it about others even here. And we're not even going to let them get to the door before we're about others. And we're going to help others get through this facility and not, not get lost downstairs in the circle. And we're going to be about others and kids because we know that the majority of people trust Christ before the age of 11. And we're going to celebrate others whose lives have changed. And we're going to develop church interdependence and be in others' lives to help them grow through small groups and through elder care. And we're going to do an all-church prayer gathering and lift others up in prayer together on November 24th. And ultimately, the vision is not about a program, and it's not about coffee, and it's not just about a foyer. And when we talk about developing the foyer, it's really it's making room for others. And if we grow to that point in two services, it's making room for others. That's what it's all about. It's others. So let's see if we have a text message question or two. We have three minutes. I should be able to answer them all within that time slot. So let's see what we have here. Um, what are examples of showing love in today's culture? Wow. What are examples of showing love in today's culture? You know what? Showing love... This is the biggie today. Showing love today is not, not having an agenda. You understand that one? And I struggle with that because I'm a pastor. Pastors have agendas. Every person I see they could come to my church and they could come to my church and they all could come to my church and loving people without agenda and I'm telling you it could be anything name it it's time it's money it's phone calls it's letters one of my girls in college this week got a card from somebody and they're a little homesick. And let me tell you, that was you. You made a huge difference in her life this week. It's a hug. It's a smile. It could be changing a tire. It could be listening, understanding. It could be not arguing. It is unlimited. It could be patience and putting up with things that are not necessarily your thing. I'm going to tell you a, a love thing that I did. Um, my girls, um, one of their birthday presents was to go to an NF concert. I don't even, do you know who NF is? Yeah, okay, I see a couple of this. Okay, all the rest of you are like someone who has two letters for their name. Wow, you know. That makes it easy to spell their name, though, you know. Um, and it was down in Grand Rapids, two and a half hours down, three hours at the concert with foam earplugs. 
and two and a half hours back. And it probably isn't something I would have done myself. And probably if we polled the congregation, there would be a large segment here that would say, I'd never do that. Well, you know what? Guess why I went? It's a little four-letter word. Starts with an L, ends with an E. Has Av in the middle. (laughs) Because I love them. I had the best seven and a half hour experience with my two girls and lathered up with Ben Gay when I got home. (laughs) It's all love. It's just love. Next. How do we show love to those in the LGBTQ in our community without going against what we believe in Christ Jesus? Wow. Wow. You know what? Um, I can tell you. Can we just order in pizza? <laughs> I can tell you, folks, it starts with relationships. There is not going to be a quickie. If, if you want, it's not going to be a quickie with anyone today. I, I would love to tell you that the day I used to, I, I grew up in the day where you could knock on someone's door. Hi, I, I went to Maranatha Baptist Church when I was a kid. I'm from Maranatha Baptist Church. Can we come in? Sure. Try that today, folks. I'm from East Bay Calvary Church. Can I come in and talk to you about the Lord? Guess what's going to happen today? You have to build relationships. You need to earn the right to talk to people. They need to believe you and trust you. And it will take a lot more with this community Trust me. And, and I praise God there were two people back in New York that we had the blessing that were in that community that we had the blessing of connecting with, but we had to build a relationship with them. They had to know that we cared. And we actually listened to them. I sat down with them and they said, Fire away like I wasn't afraid. And they fired away. I wasn't going to, I'm not going to listen to anything you have to say. I, guess what? We would never have the opportunity. If I said, you know, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, guess I would, I would never have the opportunity to talk to them. Build a relationship. Obviously, careful with your children. They're not the bait or the hook. I, you know, if it's, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I'm speaking with you, with a mature adult, and that you're careful with this, that the tide of influence goes from you to them. But they have to know you care. And be there like you would the couple that's living together and not married. Be there like them. Be there like anyone who would be involved in a sexual sin that would be outside of the bounds of marriage. Be there like the married couple that's not living the way God intends them to live. And there's a lot of those too, aren't there? Yes. That's a really broad answer for something that we could definitely order in lunch and dinner on. What a great question. You know, whoever wrote that, thank you, that you care about that. It says our church is thinking the right way. Thank you. Someone else, just one more. Do do we plan to start to celebrate recovery? You know what? I sure hope so. Um, this is a special ministry if you understand Celebrate Recovery. 
Um, and, I, and I see in our church's future beyond small groups, I also see the opportunity, and I've spoken with Pastor Dallas, and I know he has a heart for people as well, um, not just small groups, but support groups. And he's helped um, with our Vicki Wadsworth and Deb Drake to work with our grief share group. And so um, there's small groups and there are support groups. Celebrate Recovery goes along that same line to help people dealing with the hurts, habits, and hang-ups of life. And I really think that would be a beautiful thing for us to think about in the future. I think I'm probably going to have to end on that one. Can I just mention one story? I love this story. Worship team, why don't you come on up while I mention this? Come on up. Every Christmas, have you heard this one? Every Christmas, the founder of the Salvation Army in London, England, General William Booth, looked forward to addressing the crowd at the Army's annual convention. He loved seeing the faces of those who were dedicated to the charity and were passionate about its mission to serve. But on Christmas, this is in 1910, on Christmas in 1910, General Booth's health was poor and he knew he would not be able to attend the convention in person. When the thousands in attendance were told that he would not be present, a wave of sadness went over them all. General Booth's speech every year was the highlight and something everyone looked forward to all year round. However, in his absence, Booth sent a telegram to be read to the thousands that were present. And they all waited in anticipation to hear the message by telegram. As the moderator opened the telegram and he read it, here's what it said. It was one word. Others. That's it. Others. Signed, General Booth. Pretty cool, huh? One word. That was all that was needed. Those six letters reminded everyone in the crowd that was the heart of what they were all about. I think it's the heart of what we're all about, too. It's why we do what we do. All of what we do. And not just in this building. It's why we do what we do out there. Because it's why he did what he did. It's others. Stand together. It's others. It's others. Let me give one last caveat answer. It's example to the LGBTQ. You don't give up who we are, you don't agree, but you lead by example. They need to see Jesus. They need to see it's real. They need to see it really works and that he's real to us. They need to see it's genuine and it's about others. Hey, thanks for a good morning. God bless you. God bless your week as we step out of here. It's all others. Let's be Jesus to others. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. God bless you.